You know, when kids can see characters in their books that look like them or have the same cultural experiences, it can be a powerful thing. That's why authors like Henna Khan have worked so hard to increase the representation of Muslim characters in their books. Now, I recently spoke with Henna about why this effort is so important and got a sneak peek of her new book. Amina's Song is a continuation of Amina's Voice, the first book in um, the duology. And it really continues Amina's story. It's about, you know, finding a sense of belonging, about, um, you know, expressing the power of narrative and learning about um, how to use your voice to bring people together across distance. Uh, Amina travels to Pakistan to visit relatives after a long time and is transformed by this experience and returns home really eager to share this, um, you know, her love for the country, for um, the people, the places, everything. And when she returns, she finds that it's not as easy as she hoped to share this new passion uh, because people have their own ideas and limited interest in you know what she feels so strongly about which is i think something any child can relate to which is so important as to why you're wrapping it in this really digestible manner which i think is amazing what has the evolution of muslim representation in child in the children's book industry been like overall so when I began writing books for children featuring Muslim characters, there were very, very few Muslim authors being published in the mainstream. Um, it was something that I never saw when I was growing up. And when I became a mother, still found very little representation out there. So that was something that I really wanted to set about changing. Over the years, I have seen more. It's sort of moving from stories that introduce us and our customs and traditions, more introductory you know, celebrations and things like that mm -hmm. to actually stories that feature Muslim protagonists in a, in a really nuanced and fully realized way where characters get to be kids and, and do all sorts of things and experience all kinds of adventures and, and be full children like anybody else <laughs> and characters. Yeah. I know you mentioned that your role as a mother has inspired you to write, but what have your own experiences or how have your own experiences shaped the characters you create? So I think for me growing up, you know, in America, attending public schools, um, maybe feeling a little bit invisible or unseen when I was growing up, you know, not very well understood, made a big difference. And I, I feel like I want my kids, I want kids like me, little me, <laughs> to, yeah. to feel seen and to be included and to feel like their stories matter, um, that the things that happen to them at home, you know, in their community are all part of their story and that those things have value. We all need to see representation and, and to you know, feel like our stories do matter. Yeah, we need to see someone that is like us and that does inspire. What kinds of themes or I guess lessons do you think should be in children's books right now? So I definitely try to avoid, you know, anything that comes off like a lesson. You know, I, I want to yeah. tell a story that feels relatable and appealing and fun because kids, I think, can definitely pick up if they, you know, they feel like they're being preached at or taught in any way. <laughs> course, Especially being right? taught. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? But we definitely do want kids to, to think more critically of the world that they live in, to not just accept, you know, stories that may be one-sided or, um, you know, judgments of other people. And, and that's really what I hope for. I hope that kids who come to my books leave feeling like they've made a friend who is a Pakistani-American, a Muslim, and hopefully they find a lot to be able to relate to in my characters and in their families. And the overall message is that we all have so much more in common with each other than we do that's different as a parent is really invaluable, but is there a way to really teach kids about something as large as geopolitics through a story? I think so. And I think, you know, kids, kids are listening. Kids are picking up on what we talk about at the dinner table, like what they're hearing in the news. Unfortunately, when it comes to American Muslims, we're seeing that, you know, American Muslim kids are often being bullied and, and they're, they're hearing things in the media and other places that are negative towards Muslims. And so, you know, that is all complicated. And I think it is a, a good way to sort of break through those stereotypes and those very limited perceptions and get people to know each other and really dive into their lives lives and maybe question some of those terrible narratives that are being spread out there. Absolutely. And maybe, you know, depending on where one of the readers may be, introducing them to a whole new world that they've never seen before. Yes, absolutely. In some cases, and we hear that, you know, some, a good percentage of Americans say that they don't know Muslim people personally. And I feel like stories are a great way to get to know us.